I'm in Jersey, the weather is beautiful. I'm here for a conference for two days. I've actually been here all weekend with my family. This morning I'm now gonna uh, get over to St. Helio where the event is. I'll keep you posted throughout the day. So we're at the conference venue. We're at that moment when it's a big, nice, quiet room. I love this part of the day. It's about to get noisy though, because they're just about to start letting people in. So today is an event for young people. You can just see them beginning to come in now. Um, and then there's also gonna be an event for professionals and parents. We've made very good progress since that first conference in 2016, both in supporting our students and our staff with mental health issues. Our whole community recognises the importance of working together and to provide the right support. And if you can just show somebody a bit of kindness, sometimes that's all you need to do. And it's gonna eat you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running um, four workshops about how to be a good friend to someone who's depressed. The first one's just happened and I think it went okay. Oh, what did I learn? Even if you don't feel like you can talk to someone, you can always like build yourself up from within. I work for an organisation called You Matter. And we are in their PSHE lessons talking about things like sex and relationships, self-esteem. I just learned that you should really be there for someone, especially if they're experiencing a tough time and really just listen to them and talk to them, but also to not force the talk and really understand where they're coming from. You shouldn't always just tell them that things will get okay because sometimes they just need you to listen. Okay, we're getting ready for the final session. I've just been told apparently it's gonna be like really creative. The guy leading it is a poet. So all of you have written a group poem. Strength is saying when you're not okay. Strength is naming your weaknesses. Strength is talking, strength is love, strength is saying yes, strength is saying no, and strength is power. Thank you very much. You wrote that! You wrote that! Just like that, it was over. Part one is done, everyone's leaving. I have sat down with the team from Youthful Minds from Mind. I say hi guys. Hi. Hi. Um, Youthful Minds are a group of young people where we can tackle and reduce stigma and discrimination on the island of Jersey. You just have to be like a good person, want to help, and that can have like a really good benefit for somebody. Check on your friends, ask your, even your happiest friends, like, how are you doing? We do have lives outside of school. And the lesson with Saturn at that moment might not be our priority. <laughs> <laughs> it's now later the same day. I've done the thing that everybody hates and updated my slides just before the event, which I never normally do, but I captured some really good video footage earlier, so I wanted to include that. Our aim for this event really is to help you as parents and carers become more informed about mental health. We aim to reduce the stigma surrounding mental health in Jersey, especially as it impacts on young people. The school has been inspired to develop the wellbeing and mental health provision for all our boys. I've just done my talk. There's like, I don't know, two, three hundred parents here. It's quite a lot of people. It was all about how parents can support their child. I'm here as a parent of three and also as a Samaritan. We've got the Samaritan's shush listening tips. It's just very relevant to what you were saying about having patience, uh, showing that you care, really important. Saying it back, reflecting back to your child what they're saying, using the open questions and also having courage, actually having that conversation with them. Knowing what do you say if your child is telling you they're having a difficult time. And what would be your tip as a Samaritan, like how do you manage that? Not necessarily saying anything, just the fact that you're there. Inevitably and subconsciously is you will start to compare your lived reality with everyone else's very carefully curated highlights reel. And during exam time, the anxiety won't be coming up slowly, it will be about here most of the time. It's very close to hitting to overwhelm. You need to be on high alert and thinking, what are the things that we can do to make sure that we, you know, bring the calmness back in? <laughs> So I'm now back uh, at my hotel, um, and really, it's time just to go to sleep. I'm so tired. Good night.
It's the beginning of another beautiful day in Jersey. It's just stunning out there. Today we've got professionals. I'm just putting the finishing touches on my presentations for the day, of which I'm giving three. Really looking forward to it. Okay, I've arrived. Uh, the room's really, really full, really, really busy. Uh, I'm sitting on the table with the young ambassadors who are featuring in my presentation. They're doing a workshop later. We'll talk to them a bit more. We had a room full of 214 to 19 year olds. And gosh, they made us proud. They really did. At the time, I myself was going through depression because of my shame and discomfort I never told him. But actually, that day, I did tell him in the lunch queue, and that was a real relief to be able to do that. And then, two months later at Victoria College, in a whole staff inset, in the Great Hall with all our pre present, it seemed absolutely the right thing to do to tell that audience that I had personal experience with depression as a way of starting a conversation about stigma and opening up that conversation at Victoria College. Yeah, this place was buzzing because Pookie, are you not in the room yet? Yeah. Oh, I'm filming I, you. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I took your advice. I had a very hot, stressful day yesterday. It ended up with budgets not good. And um, so I thought, oh, I'm going to go home, grab the dog, and go for a walk on the beach. And I felt much better. So I released a little bit of that stress. So I got a bit mental. Because Despite my power, I am a youth. I think it's very important for it not to be a confusing process. Listen and listen, to sort of be there and not listen, to go, oh, what am I going to say next? And at 15, I was expected to meet someone new and tell them my whole life story. And then because of high staff turnover, which actually, as young people, isn't our problem, we are expected to do that over and over again. I just want to say thank you so much for your bravery as well and for sharing it. Come marvel at me. Batman. Linguistic reflexes like a cat man. I leap over the cleverest verse that I've never even ever rehearsed and I still land on my feet. I'm a daredevil. A care devil. I never even have to swear devil. Um, it's Liz Kendrick Lodge and Suzanne Jobs range are. But um, I found the sponsorship 18 months ago and I've been helping them out ever since. So, yeah. so well, I think you, you deserve a pat on the back for that. So, well, thank yeah, you. I feel proud. So, so yeah, lots of people enjoying coffee, having a break. It's the kind of thing where I could be like, do you want to come say hi on camera? And everyone's going to say no. Everyone just runs away when you have a camera. So this is another great thing I'm learning. So, you know, I, I, I don't like people. Like, I like people, but, you know, autism, and, yeah, lots of people, noise stuff. So I found if I walk around with a camera, no one actually wants to talk to me, um, which is actually kind of, yeah, quite good. So the other tip for um, how to manage a conference, if you're pooky and you find noise and people really stressful, is toilets. Yes, I'm filming myself in the toilet. I realise that's probably weird, but... I, I spend quite a lot of time hiding in toilets um, and it just gives me a moment like I sometimes do like some box breathing or finger breathing you know that kind of thing just for a minute or two and kind of help myself to reset a little bit. I'm going to introduce you briefly to the people who make the magic happen so the tech guys. So this is all the uh, the screen equipment so this this runs back to the projectors which you see up there and then I've got, I've got a few laptops on the go so I've got the next presentation ready loaded on this laptop. So you're, are you from Jersey have I imagined that? Um, Partly, I'm from Leicestershire, but I was raised in Jersey between 8 and 18, so I spent 10 years here. So okay. all my formative years in schooling was here. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So I've been doing like, like proper fangirl stuff, so I uh, like do poetry, not like you, but like I wrote a book about using um, poetry for healing and stuff. Yeah, and I've always like wanted to learn to rap, and now you've made me really, really want to, except I've also gone, that looks really hard, I don't know if I could learn. There's a way of doing it, I could teach you the tricks of the trade. I'm going to learn to rap. <laughs> <laughs> so we have finite, fixed, brain bandwidth, a fixed capacity to focus on certain things at any one time. Uh, we just had the lunch break, which, as you know, is not my favourite thing. Uh, someone kindly took pity on me and went and got me a sandwich, which I ate quietly on my own. And now my room is just beginning to fill up, so I am going to be teaching a workshop about eating disorders and then another one about self-harm. It sounds like you're doing a great job. It sounds like you're doing a great job. Yes. Relapse is a really, really important part of eating disorders recovery. We can think that there is only one way to recover and that's perfectly. And we need to help people recognise that there's lots of different ways to recover and it doesn't always look neat. There'll be good days, there'll be bad days. And the most important thing is on the bad days to ask for help and support. Um, and I will help you, I will be here, it's okay. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. It's not 1992. I'm playing Fortnite.
fantastic. Okay, just go for it. So at Saltgate we're really committed to well-being and supporting young people, particularly in our community, but extending outside of Jersey as well. We really want to engage. We've set up a charitable fund um, and we've put one and a quarter million pounds in there and we want to spend it on things like the well-being conference and everything that comes out of it. Health and well-being, we want to be working with charities and with great organisations to be getting the messages out there and getting the support out there. Um, that's really where we're coming from and the feedback's been phenomenal. So we're, we're really pleased that um, the attendance has been so great, the speakers have all been so fantastic and hopefully the messages will get out there and more good will come from this. So do you reckon it might happen again? Yes, absolutely. Yay! We're really committed <laughs> to this. We'd love to see more events like this. Brilliant. That was phenomenal, thank you. And that's a wrap. I'm eating leftover brownie, clearing up stuff. They're breaking everything down. We're done. It's been a long couple of days, but it's been great. Uh, time to get out.